from Eyewitness News, this is Sports Wrap. Welcome to the Week 8 edition of the Friday Night Football Wrap. As the weather cools, divisional races are starting to heat up. We start tonight with a Division I showdown. Bishop Hendrickson spent the week alone atop the D1 standings, looking to beat back one of the teams on their heels. East Providence, the Townies, at 3-1 and one in league, play a game behind the Hawks. Also trailed Hendrickson in the game, 10-zip at the half. Opening possession of the third, facing third down, looking deep past his eyes at Conte. Almost picks it off. The first of many Conte highlights on this night. Ensuing drive. Conte breaks it outside. Seven yards. First down. A couple plays later, they go to the other side. Option. Conte again picking up a big chunk. The drive stalled because of a penalty. No problem. Conte lined up from 40 yards out. He's got the distance barely off the crossbar. Hendrickson still undefeated. 13-7 the final. The band all fired up. Portsmouth is the Patriots host at South Kingstown. Portsmouth looking to stay a game behind Hendrickson. They were up in the second half. Rebels try to rally. A fakery. Garrett O'Dowd uh, fakes the handoff, then shuffles the ball to Sean Connolly, and he does the rest, beating the defense into the end zone. But the Pats' defense stout tonight. Barry Gaines, the pretty pick. Portsmouth now 4-1 and one in Division One play, 33-7. The final Patriots get a chance to knock off Hendrickson next week in Warwick. Barrington visiting Cranston East, picking up the action in the third. The Eagles, Vinny San Angelo with the carry. He's got speed, 20 yards to the house. The Thunderbolts would answer. In the fourth, Kyle Tracy up top to Jared with Jerio, 25-yard touchdown. They would tack on a two-point conversion, making it 33-22. That wasn't it, though. Tracy with the field goal from 33 yards out brings him even closer but Barrington able to hold on in this one, 33-25, the final score. Homecoming tonight in LaSalle, playing host to North Kingstown. Second quarter, LaSalle's Mark Reynoso and Dean Grasso don't get fooled on the play. Big five-yard loss on the stop. Later in the second quarter, flip-flop with LaSalle now on offense. Rams Josh Morris with the rock, shaking and baking his way 40 yards until he finds Pater, they would tack on the extra point to make it 31 zip. Rams go on to win it 31 to 13. To Division 2B, St. Ray's visiting Mount Hope. Huskies trying to stay in second place, up 8 0 in the first. St. Ray's trying to get something going. Big Trevor Vassy looks deep, has a man open, but he can't haul it in. Later on the drive, Vassy hands it off. Helmets on ball. Ball is loose. Huskies all over it and go back on offense, but the Saints D stepping it up. The give to Aaron Booth, taken down by Ricardo Pugnon, second quarter after recovering another fumble. Huskies give one right back. The screen pass, Trey Jones, picked off by Ben Pillsbury. St. Ray's picks up a big road victory, 20-16, to the final score. Well, we're just getting started on the Friday Night Football Wrap. We'll head to Division Two. We're the Portsmouth High School Cheerleaders. Stick around for more of the Friday Night High School Football Wrap. Yeah! Division 2, 3, and 4 for uh, some good key matchups with playoff implications. And we'll jump over the border to Massachusetts. Two neighbors getting together on the gridiron. Stick around. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to week eight of the high school football wrap. A quick reminder, you can rewatch all of tonight's action on our website, WPRI.com. We'll have most of the games posted by tonight. Every contest will be available by tomorrow morning. Also, you can rewatch highlights from previous weeks. Again, that's WPRI.com. Back to the action, the top team in Division Three, Rogers, making the trip to take on Classical. Fast forward second quarter, Rogers QB Cody Platt. Has some time, finds Trevor Majoria downfield, 55-yard pass and catch. The extra point was blocked. The Vikings do go on to win it 30-14. to Moses Brown looking to rebound for their first league loss, visiting Middletown, and they were up in the second half, but the Islanders try to rally. Frank Wiley with the strip and the loose ball recovered by Chris Barcinas. Islanders looking to score from that, but disaster would strike. The pitch gets away, and so does Moses Brown's Vincent Picaro. 
and he would not be caught. 82 yards on the fumble return for the touchdown for Picaro. Looks like he had a little gas left in the tank. Quakers defense, plenty more tricks up their sleeve. Max Martin, though, the pickoff right here. Quakers rebound from their loss last week. The 34-8 win over Middletown. We had over the border, Dartmouth cheerleaders sky high for their team. Indians hosting neighbor New Bedford. The Whalers playing poor gas. Miles Medeiros, the nice dart to Marcel Depina. First and goal, and B. That would set up this. Medeiros calls his own number, fumbles, but recovers and digs his way into the end zone for six points. A little later, Medeiros hands it off to Pito Gandre, and Pito is off. 26 yards to Pater, New Bedford. On top at that point, no final score called in for this one. Time now to join our football rap correspondent, Sarah Hogan. Mittens not needed for highlights, Sarah. You look warmer. Hopefully the vocal cords are thawed out enough from your trek throughout the chilly state of Rhode Island. Well, Eric, I think it's more of my fingers that I need to feel now, but give credit where credit is due to these high school football players who actually had to play tonight in these chilly conditions. Let's get to their highlights. We start first in Johnson, a Division II clash between Cumberland and Johnson. Panthers coach doesn't seem to be phased by that weather at all. Pick up the action. Second half, Panthers up by one, but the ball, Captain David Bubar with the QB sneak. He gets into the end zone. Johnson up 14-7. to Later in the third quarter, Panthers looking for a little bit more insurance. This time, Bubar goes to Brett Simmons on the outside. Side, who sprints his way through eight yards for the key touchdown there, 21-14. But Cumberland not going down without a fight. Less than five to go in the game. Captain Mike Hayes hands it off to Thomas Carroll, and Thomas barrels his way through to get the Clippers back within a touchdown. But on the ensuing onside kick, Johnson recovers the ball. They win it at home, 21-14 over Cumberland. Next up, another Division II showdown between Coventry and Shea. First half action, Raiders with the ball. QB Adelson De Silvia on the run, throws it away. Zach St. Pierre with the interception coming up here. And the ball, though, would get knocked loose. Bunch of Okers are there to fall on it, however, as they take over possession first and goal. Okers capitalize. QB sneak Michael Fisk punches it through for the score. 7-0 Okers, but they are not finished yet in the second quarter now. This time, Fisk gives it to Captain Dallas Bloom with a name like that, you know he's going to be on the highlight reel. Dallas finds his hole and bursts through like a rocket. 50-yard touchdown run. The Oakers go up 13-0. They go on to win this by a score of 26-7. Next up, Division 4 showdown. One town over Division Central Falls, excuse me, playing host North Providence. First quarter, Warriors threatening. Steven Vasquez hands it off to Captain Jose Peraza, who does the rest. Five-yard push into the end zone for the Warriors' first TD of the game. 6-0 the score, but Warriors not done. Still in the first, Steven Vasquez Vasquez with the QB keeper, and what a keep it was. Ziggin and a zagging his way 40 yards for the TD. And the Warriors have the 12 0 lead, but the Cougars fighting back on the return. Special play on special teams by Samuel Odukoya. I think this is a play of the night candidate, right, Eric? Sam is out of here taking it 70 yards to the house. North Providence gets within a touchdown. Cougars eventually go on to win, however, 20 12 over CF. Eric, back to you. Thank you much, Sarah. Coming up next.